scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Supernatural protection. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? The Lord is the strength of my life, he says. I shall not fear what man does to me. Listen, you can get up in the morning and go to the market. You know you are innocent, but how do you guarantee everybody there is innocent? You can step into a car and you are ready to drive. Just because the car is sound does not mean you are safe. I'm not scaring you. Are we together now? This was one of the things I sorted out with God early because I knew the things you'll be doing through my life. And I'm telling you, even this one does not work by default. I don't mean to scare you. You desire greatness. And when that anointing came upon you, Satan saw it too. Satan knows that instead of fighting every child in your school, of the 500 students in your school, he should fight you and bring you down. He has won. There are people who are equal nations. Why should Satan fight nations when he can fight them? It's cheaper to fight them. If there is any current attack over anyone's life here, under the sound of my voice, you have been seeing patterns around your life that you don't understand. Maybe in the life of your spouse. Those following, make sure you connect. I'm speaking now. I'm speaking from that glory in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. I command those attacks that they come to an end now. <laughs> Hear me. Hear me. When it was time to end Zechariah's captivity, when Gabriel came and Zacharias was questioning him, he said, I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God. In other words, will I be false and leave the presence of God and come to you? I am coming from the presence. Oh, let me speak from that presence. That in the name of Jesus again, anything that fights you goes down instantly. Help them please. Anything that it, it goes down instantly. Please sit down. supernatural protection there are all kinds of things happening kidnappings demonic things ritual activities that just want to waste people's lives can i tell you you can only do your best to protect yourself physically let me tell you the truth you can find rest there are many people who are afraid now. They can't travel. They can't go out because they are not sure. Look how unsafe the world is, unfortunately, even our regions. The moment you are a person of influence, you don't even know what can happen. People have died because somebody shook them. The, the same kiss that is supposed to be a proof of love was a sign to an enemy. This is the one to kill. 
So someone can shake you. How are you? God bless you. Every business and every ministry that has gone under attack, every man of God whose voice is being fought by Satan, every anointing, whether in this city, in this nation, you are a man of God and the devil is fighting your voice, fighting your relevance, fighting your ministry. I come from that presence and I decree and declare that battle comes to an end now. Hear me? Every business here under strange attacks, you used to do well, but you don't know what suddenly happened. Sales have gone down, clients have gone down, inexplainable tragedies by the power that raised Christ from the dead. That devil gives way now. Every parent here, you don't seem to understand what is happening with your children again. Poor performance in school, wasting your school fees. They are intelligent people, but something happens to them. In the name of Jesus, I declare deliverance for you now. Please sit down. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. hallelujah praise the name of the lord do you know let me tell you this when you understand the mystery of the presence of god it is beyond the realm of anointing no you can be a career of the living presence of god that when people come within the circumference of your person this is not about falling down or standing up unconsciously you can be in a place and when God wants to rescue a destiny, he will just make them pass close to you. Did the Bible not say the shadow of Peter? The Bible called it shadow. We know better. It's not the shadow. They came under the influence. Peter carried that presence. Take that presence to your office and watch what happens. Take that presence to your business. For as long as you think I'm just a homo sapien, I'm just an intellectual. No. You are a career of that presence. That you make up your mind that I will never shake anybody or greet anybody and the person goes back and nothing changes. No. Hear me. Someone comes to greet you and says, good afternoon, sir. He shook your hand and left and he may not know what he carried. All he knows is that I shook his hand and goodness and mercy began to follow me. What is the mystery behind my day? Favor from morning, rest following me and the Lord will remind them that you shook one who stands in the presence. Hallelujah. Please sit down. So number one, the Lord can be mighty in your midst to bring supernatural favor. Number two, rest roundabout. Number three, protection and super, supernatural protection and preservation. Are you ready for number four? The fourth blessing that comes upon any individual who pays that price to be a career of God's manifest presence is called honor and exemption. Honor and exemption. Please give us Isaiah 43 from verse 3 to 6. Let's read from Amplified. Isaiah 43 from verse 3 to 6. Someone's life is changing. Now watch this. I'd like us to read. Or I'll just read, you just follow. <laughs> For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. It says, I give Egypt to the Babylonians for your ransom. God is sharing men to bail you out. Look at this. Ethiopia and Seba for your release. Next verse. 
it says because you are precious in my sight and honored and because I love you what will I do I will give men in return for you and people in exchange for your life this is your Bible that when you can secure that presence God would rather give a nation as a ransom to preserve you verse 5 fear not for I am with you I will bring your offsprings from the east where they are dispersed and gather you from the west the last verse it says for I will say to the north give up do you know what this means I will say to the south keep not back bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth that everything that has been scattered north south east and west that because you have secured the presence of God he can begin to give instructions it is not just men men don't come alone men come with things when the magi saw the star that identified where Jesus the king was they came with gifts the Bible says they came with the gifts of gold frankincense and myrrh when Job was about to be restored the Bible says all the people who left him they started coming from everywhere Job 42 and verse 10 give it to us please Job 42 and verse 10 that the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends and the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had how did that happen 11 the Bible says then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and they that had been his acquaintance before something made them leave him and did eat bread with him in his house and they bemoaned him and comforted him over the evil that the Lord had brought upon him every man also gave him a piece of money every man first Samuel chapter 18 let's start our reading from verse 10 still amplified first Samuel 18 from verse 10 are you ready watch what happened to the boy David the Bible says the next day an evil spirit from God one day I will teach you that some of these expressions that mean an evil spirit from God it was an error in the understanding of the prophets those days because evil does not proceed from God but for now let's just look at it it says and raved madly in his house Saul now and David played with his hands as at other times and Saul was holding a javelin Saul wanted to kill David and the Bible says Saul cast the javelin and he thought I will pin David to the wall and David evaded him twice read on Saul was afraid of David verse 12 he says because the Lord was with him Saul was afraid David became a threat what is it about this young boy that exempts him that evil that should happen to him even the one I planned does not happen look at what Saul ended up doing the man who wanted to kill David watch what he ended up doing verse 13 so Saul removed David from him and made him commander over a thousand and he went out and came in before the people verse 14 David acted wisely in all his ways and succeeded and the Lord was with him you see it there again 15 we're reading to 16 when Saul saw how capable and successful David was he stood in awe of him but all Israel and Judah loved David for he went out and came in before them everybody say honor say exemption that's what happens when the Lord is in the midst of you even to be mighty honor trails you like a shadow Is someone learning? Saul wanting to kill David. David dodged that javelin 
and he ended up promoting him when you read the previous verses you will see that women began to sing songs to say ah Saul killed 1,000 and David 10,000 and it grieved his heart can I tell you this you can respect yourself you've heard me say but you cannot honor yourself nobody has the power to honor himself honor is conferred upon you are we together there are many believers who love God. There are many gifted and graced people, but they lack this grace for honor. Honor causes men to perceive you correctly, to match the worth of your sacrifice, and then to reward you accordingly. The assignment of honor is to keep correcting perceptions until it matches who you truly are. Hallelujah. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. That's the end of his story. Then it goes back to scene one and says that the mother bore him in sorrow and she named him Jabez because of her pain. And he got to a point where he found out his contemporaries had risen. Nothing was working in his life. He took responsibility. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me, he said, and enlarge my coast. And he prayed and the Bible says God had him. four things that the presence of God secures never forget this so that when you see people walking in this possibility the secret is not any invention of themselves they have found security in the manifested presence of God the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty let me give you five keys very quickly five keys haven't told you the benefit and the blessings that come when you secure the manifest presence of god let me show you the roadmap. please follow very carefully i want you to pray in one minute and say lord open my eyes let me see i need this i need this in my life are you praying open my eyes that I will see beholding wondrous things out of your law hallelujah I give you these five keys as irrefutable spiritual keys that everyone who understands and activates these keys you will you will experience the manifest presence of God in your life alongside the blessings in a fearful way key number one you want to secure the Shekinah of God in your life perpetually. The first key is passion for God. Passion for God. Matthew 22 and verse 37. Please let's hurry up. Matthew 22, 37. Passion for God. You cannot secure that dimension of God's presence without passion for God. 22 37 Matthew 22 37 thou shalt love the Lord your God with all thy heart that means you can love him with part of it is that true with all thy soul and with all thy mind that means when he has to do with God your heart your mind your brain your soul everything must plunge into it can i tell you the presence of god is not a political issue if you are not genuinely passionate you can fake power not presence you can get on um, adulterated power not adulterated presence passion for god John chapter 14 and verse 23. John 14, 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, 
and we will come to him is that in your bible and make our abode with him so your love and your passion for god will secure that dimension of his presence there are many believers who have not made up their minds to passionately love and seek jesus you can't secure that presence he will love you you are just ready to remain at the outer court you are not ready to press through even to the holy of holies first corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9 first corinthians 2 and verse 9 first key passion for god but as it is written it says i had not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which god has prepared for them that love him listen there are many people who love preaching more than jesus there are people who love anointing more than jesus there are people who love the motions of spiritual leadership more than jesus there are people who love the accolades of men more than jesus those who love business more than jesus can i tell you it's a risk in this end time to love anything and exalt it above and beyond jesus you want to secure divine presence you want the lord to be in the midst of you and even to be mighty let me tell you it has to do with your love for jesus not your love for preaching not your love for healing not your love for deliverance we're back to where it all starts passion i love jesus to what degree passion qualifies the love it, it, it makes it deeper that he is everything church is quiet apostle can't he just come or say no sir no listen to me only a foolish person will take a visitor that you suspect to be a thief and take him to where you keep your money and your ATM and your jewelries and say just sit here and wait for me I'm traveling somewhere and I'll return back is that how much you hate yourself there are visitors that when they come they stand at the gate you don't hate them but they have not chosen to press deeper so you what is what are you looking for okay this and that and that all right you give to them at the gate there are others who may enter into the house and stay outside you will honor them by bringing a seat and say please sit outside there are others who may get into the living room and sit carefully as though they are writing an exam all of them are relationship dependent there's somebody who will enter the living room and even before you arrive the person can just he can even pick your remote and be flipping channels it is all a product of relationship and yet there are few very few who can even come and meet you in your room and say how are you they can even be helping you dress your cloth while you are not there it is relationship dependent so don't you give god the relationship of a stranger and expect to be at the inner court of the spirit it would not happen that way preacher it will not happen that way businessman it will not happen that way there are people who will remain at the outer court they are interested lord i just hear you are something that blesses whatever you are I love you and if you ever find a reason to bless me I'm still here outer court there are others who will push his hand and say I'm looking for your heart do you know there are people who they are not the owners of your house they don't live in your house but you are so close you can give them the spare key have you seen people like that to the point that you can call them and say where are you okay enter my house go to my bedroom open a drawer there you will see some money or something pick it up have you seen it yes sir you are talking you have that confidence that's why god can trust certain people with graces and you are wondering is god not afraid is it not a risk to make this person that powerful find out the relationships and the covenants that provide that possibility i love i love 
I love your presence. I love, I love. I love your presence. Hallelujah. A gentleman sent me a text some months ago. I don't know who that is. Apparently, it's just, it's just something. I think he, maybe because he used to watch me just say the power of God will do this. This one will happen. And he just thought the thing just happens. And then I think he went to his fellowship or his group or something like that. And um, according to him, he said he repeated everything that he knew I was saying. And he made a mess and a fool out of himself there because it is not a charm you are not reciting oh the power of god will touch somebody here this one no 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 this is not i am gabriel that stands in the presence do you know what that means gabriel is saying if I've come to destroy you, Zechariah, are you saying the eye of God did not see it? I am Gabriel, man of God. Preach, standing in the presence. Businessman, do business, standing in the presence. And watch what happens to your life. Extraordinary manifestations of the glory of God. Many preachers will not pay the price to build that intimacy that creates that cloud of the presence. And we mechanically come before God's people. Then you want to prophesy. Then you want to preach. You will be surprised that you will be preaching a sermon that should be so powerful. And yet the people are looking at you like this. Clueless and wondering why you will end. Because it's just words. Empty words. Not backed by any presence. hallelujah many years ago I preached a message called envoys of his presence and I was teaching believers this same thing how to access divine presence I have found it as a gift and a treasure my greatest asset is not anointing believe me my greatest asset is not the scriptures in my mind as powerful as they are my greatest asset is not my Bible this was produced by a publishing house with people there who are not even born again. Are we together? My greatest asset is the presence of God. Cast me not away, not from my palace. Cast me not away from thy presence. He says, take not your spirit from me. He knew what he would miss. Moses said, do not let us live here if your presence will not go with us. Lord, can there be any koinonia service without your presence? What then will we be doing? Preaching? No. Passion for God. Number two. What is the second key that secures the manifest presence of God in the life of an individual? Are you ready? The desire to please God. The desire to please God. You can put slash total obedience. The desire to please God slash total obedience. John chapter 8 and verse 29. Let's hurry up so we can pray. John 8, 29. Jesus is speaking now. Please look up. He said, and he that sent me is with me. The father had not left me alone. Why? For I do always those things that please him. That means the father is not just walking with me because I am Jesus the son. My passion to please him, my passion to obey him is what has secured his presence. John 14 21 John chapter 14 and verse 21 he that hath my commandments and keepeth them he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father he says and I will love him and will manifest myself to him 
Is that in your Bible? Ezekiel chapter 33, please, and verse 31. Ezekiel 33, 31. It says, And they come to thee as the people come it, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. Everybody said the desire to please him. That's right. That my life will bring joy to you, O God. And he says this for me, you are ready for this dimension of my presence. Number three. Are you ready for the third key? What is the third key that activates the manifest presence of God in the life of a man? Intense moments of prayer and worship. Please start that point. Intense moments of prayer and worship. Yes, sir. Intense moments of prayer and worship. Psalm 10 verse 4. Psalm 10 verse 4 and then 63 from verse 1. Psalm 10 verse 4. It says the wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. He says God is not in all his thoughts. Look at such a man. Because of his pride, I am self-sufficient. He will not seek after God. God is not even in his thoughts. Psalm 63 and verse 1. O oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Verse 2. To see thy power and thy glory so as I have seen in the sanctuary. Next verse. It says because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips will praise you. Verse 4. Thus, I will bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. Uh -huh. It says, my soul shall be satisfied as a result with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. Can I tell you this? Many of you heard the testimony when I came in. I met the testimony of that dear lady, the convert, that she played worship and prayed. Listen, let me tell you, if you want God to come down, do what Paul and Silas did. The Bible says they at midnight, they took their eyes away from the chains and everything. They prayed and then they sang and the prisoners had them. I'm sure somebody from a neighboring cell will say, stupid people, we're all criminals. Would you keep quiet here? Let's meditate on what is going to happen to us. And the Bible says they kept praying and singing it was not an angel that came read your bible for apostle peter it was an angel that came because they were praying alone but these ones prayed and then they sang and god said you guys step back the bible says suddenly an earthquake that's god for you angels don't create earthquake broke everything and the chains were there and the jailer wanted to kill himself and he said no 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 we are safe what happened he came the lord thy god in the midst of thee can i tell you learn this there are times that you need to take out time to pray pray and when you pray you worship you sing songs you roll if you can't sing the worship team they've sang for you there are so many songs people have done all kinds of worship collections saturate your room there is no man of god i know who is a solid career of god's presence who has alienated the life of worship it has nothing to do with whether you can sing or not it is the protocol of his presence psalm 100 said come before him with singing hallelujah sometimes you can just lie down and allow that worship consuming fire sweet perfume 
His awesome presence fills this room, consuming fire, sweet perfume. Your awesome presence fills my life, consuming fire, sweet perfume. Your awesome presence. Let me give you a secret. The moment you find out that your atmosphere is tensed, you are sensing demonic activities or anger or some attributes, change immediately. Look for worship and change that climate. Hear what I'm telling you. The moment you begin to sense unease in your spirit, the spirit of fear other spirits are joining the queue waiting for fear or anger or any of these spirits you can change the atmosphere immediately hallelujah is this how my life will be what is the meaning of this why was i born in nigeria my parents had the opportunity to go abroad once those thoughts start coming just know that it is the devil. That's a Luciferian spirit wanting to destroy you. Will this man really favor me? He said tomorrow he will bless me. But how am I sure? Very quickly change that atmosphere. It's a secret. Your phone is not just for you to browse. Remove a lot of rubbish songs and put correct, godly, fire-carrying songs. Arrange them as a file so that when duty calls without thinking twice, hallelujah the devil looks at you and says the way i destroyed your father and your mother that is how i will shred your life to pieces you see what is happening in this nation and just when he wants to speak you just play something hallelujah you have won the victory let the voice just keep talking Let's see who will survive. Hallelujah. Don't stop the voice from talking. You just create that atmosphere. Listen. Don't waste your time shutting the voice. You bring in another voice. My Bible says the light shineth in darkness. Listen. You go to bed and you wake up with some kind of dream. Just play worship and go to bed. Let it put it on repeat if God helps you and you can find one that has tongues in between while you are sleeping hallelujah listen please don't think I'm wasting your time master the art of controlling your atmosphere don't give Satan that room the world is negative hear me the world is negative in many regards you switch on the news you hear that this is happening they just deduct some money from your your account to add to it and you see what is left you feel like throwing away your phone that's the time to change your atmosphere don't please don't forget this it's called the law of atmosphere every spirit is atmosphere dependent their manifestations when the devil wants to come he does not just budge into you there is an atmosphere that he has to wait for hallelujah passionate love desire to please god and to obey him intense moments of prayer and worship please look at me it is good to pray but in addition to prayer take out time to worship God apostle what does it mean to worship God one to sing you can sing praises and worship God or you can be in that atmosphere where you are pouring your life and your everything to him in worship Are you ready number four 
what is the fourth key that secures the manifest presence of God walking in humility write it down please walking in humility Psalm 34 verse 18 the fourth key you want to secure the manifest presence of God the Bible says the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save it such as be of a contrite spirit pride and glory will not go hand in hand that means you want to secure weightier dimensions of God's presence father I stand in awe of you that you can do this through my hands and my life thank you for your presence and the wonderful things that happen and God will say just because I gave you this dimension you are walking in humility people will sing your praises and clap thank God for them but you remind yourself I am nothing without him and he says you are ready for another dimension weightier dimensions of his presence hallelujah koinonia please hear me i have a duty to admonish you fight pride fight pride out of your life don't say we are like that fight it every time you see pride in your life don't tolerate it whatsoever pride in ministry pride in business the pride of life pride based on accomplishments it does not mean to not acknowledge what God is doing. You have to acknowledge him. It does not mean to not receive gratefully when people thank God for your life. But please fight pride. You know what pride is? Pride is a state of self-sufficiency where you believe that every result you are getting is because of your own effort. Now you are in trouble. Humility is not throwing away the truth or the fact about who you are and what God has done in your life, but a, an unashamed and a vocal acknowledgement that I am what I am today because of him. God, you've made me a billionaire, you may say. Thank you for that. If you say I'm not a billionaire, that's not humility. That's ignorance. You are a billionaire. God has blessed you. God has helped you. Apostle, should I trek instead of entering my car? That is, that is a labor of a fool. The Bible said to weary every one of them. Are we together? But humility is that in the midst of that, you take your eyes away from these things and say, Father, it is because of you. I am what I am by the grace of God. Humility. Finally, what is the final key that secures the presence of God? Sacrifice sacrifice as a lifestyle oh, not just as something you do traditionally sacrifice of everything your life your resources everything sacrifice secures the presence of God Psalm 50 and verse 5 gather unto me my saints he says 50 and verse 5 those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice Hallelujah. Very, very powerful. When you read 1 Kings chapter 3, 1 Kings chapter 3, the full text is 3 to 14. We may not be able to read everything, but let's see how far we can go. Solomon loved the Lord, the Bible says. Are you seeing all these steps there? Then walking in the statutes of David his father, only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. Verse 4. He says, The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. And he offered a thousand burnt offerings, motivated by love. Verse 5. In Gibeon, who came? The Lord. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I will give you. That's a blank check. Most of us, even God will be surprised. You will think he's not hearing you again. Just listening to everything you are saying. What did you say I should give you? I should give you heaven and move away from there. I should give you my throne. Because many people sometimes, we, we don't have limits to our passions and desires. 
when you have desires without limits it will lead you to carnality you must get to a realm where you know that enough is enough some of us if god asks now what should i give you anything he says stand up from your throne that was the mistake of haman what shall we do to this man he said let him climb the king's horse and wear the king's robe out of the abundance of the heart the mouth was that means one day he would have killed the king esther helped him to kill him fast if not one day her man would have killed the king he said i have served you in righteousness in uprightness you have kept me you have kept for him in this great kindness thou has given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day verse 7 he says now O lord thou hast made thy servant king instead of david my father and i am but a little child this is a king go not a king about to be elected or about to be a king that is currently seated and he said lord they call me king but i know what i am before you i am a little child i know not how to go out and how to come in what display of humility it says and thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen a great people that cannot be numbered or counted for multitude verse 9 give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge your people that i may be discerned between good and bad for who is able to judge these people this so great a people the bible said the speech pleased the lord have you seen all the steps i'm leading now he did something here that pleased the lord that solomon had asked this thing even in his requests and petitions he was pleasing the lord and the lord said because thou hast not asked for long life neither for riches for thyself nor the life of your enemies but you have asked for yourself understanding to decide judgment behold i have done according to all thy words i have given thee a wise and understanding heart so that there was none like thee before thee neither after thee shall there arise any like unto thee and i have also given thee that which thou hast not asked both riches and honor so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days humility is a very powerful spiritual quality that can secure the presence of god do you know i submit to you sincerely every time i have the opportunity to pray and spend time with god especially preparing for koinonia i sit down sometimes and i don't say anything i may just allow worship to just be playing and i think of the honor that god has given me god has given me the honor of many people's lifetime in one and sometimes i'm not even able to pray and i say god look at what you have done through my life if you never bless me again you don't owe me you have you have blessed me you have been kind to me do you know what it means for god to gather people across the world to listen to you and to pay attention to what you represent don't you ever take it for granted it is the mercy and the favor of god sometimes i just lie down flat on the ground and i say lord i dedicate this result this success while i'm doing that tens and hundreds of text messages are coming to my phone from all over the world apostle you are this and i push the phone together with the text messages you can wait let me worship the god who made me what i am learn humility don't be ashamed of it we live in a world where submitting your trophies to jesus looks like you fall in your hand we're very full of ourselves we like to brag and say this is my own my estate my building my car my money wonderful but jesus must be seen jesus you be lifted higher higher be lifted higher in my life be lifted higher higher be lifted higher let my king be lifted up let your name be lifted up 
let your praise be lifted up, O Zion. And while you are demonstrating humility in his presence and before men, you must demonstrate humility in his presence and then before men. If you demonstrate humility in his presence alone, you are still a hypocrite. In his presence and before men, they must see your life and know that this man was God made. Made by God. The same way you look at a product and they say made in China or made in the US. Made by this. Built by this construction company. People should look at your life prospered by God, helped by God, anointed by God, favored. Hold on. They should not just see the prosperity by who? The person who made it happen is the one who, de who deserves the credit. Let's wrap up. Finally, when you make up your mind, to live a life of sacrifice you have offered your entire body a living sacrifice he says Romans 12 and verse 1 I beseech you brethren by the message of God he says to offer your body so your body is the first sacrifice because the love of God will constrain you on many grounds sacrifice the presence of God would not come for nothing. It comes because there is work to be done. Your body, your resources, your intellect, everything must serve the Lord. So, if your body is serving the Lord and your pocket is not serving the Lord, it is not complete sacrifice. If your pocket is serving the Lord and your body is not serving the Lord, it's not complete sacrifice. Your mind must serve the Lord. Your influence must serve the Lord. Everything God gave you must serve the Lord, sacrificially so. Hallelujah. We returned from a trip today and as soon as we arrived, I didn't even consider, it was not in my mind whether I'm tired or not, that, that, that was far from it. My heart was just to brush up on my notes and to pray excitedly. Lord, this is another opportunity again to bless your people. Thank you for the honor of granting me safe journey. Now, let's get to the business. When we are done and I'm done with everything, I can now find out. Are you tired? They said you came and preached. Now I can verify whether it was me or it was... Can I tell you this? There are many of us, God cannot trust you with certain weights of his presence because of simple laziness and and an excessive passion for comfort and convenience this duty will cost you everything there are times you will have to stretch Jesus stretched the apostles stretched I hand over to you five keys that I have worked with in my own life and I've seen a bit of this grace and this mighty presence of God upon my life. For as long as you walk in keeping with these keys, a final recap as we pray. Number one, passion for God. Number two, the desire to please God and to walk in total obedience. Number three, intense moments of heartfelt prayer and worship number four walking in humility genuine humility and number five a lifestyle of sacrifice excitedly so you have secured the keys that will make you indeed a host to God's Shekinah Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim 
We'll sing it one more time and then we're done. Ruach Elohim. Ruach Elohim. Ruach Elohim. Ruach Elohim. Ruach Elohim. points tonight one minute each prayer point number one father I obtain grace to walk in keeping with the principles and the keys that secure your manifest presence in my life please open your mouth and begin to pray talk to the Lord from the depth of your heart I desire to be a genuine carrier of your presence genuine career of your presence genuine career of your presence the Lord my God in the midst of me is mighty are you praying I obtain grace Prayer point number two. I like you to begin to pray. Father, you are mighty in my life. Let me see your might produce favor. Let me see your might bring me rest roundabout. Let me see your might bring me supernatural protection and preservation. Let me see your might bring me honor and exemption. Someone pray. Lord, you are in my midst, in my business, in my church. The Lord in the midst of thee is mighty. I enjoy divine favor, supernatural favor with God and with man by reason of your presence. I enjoy rest round about by reason of your presence. I enjoy supernatural protection and preservation physically and spiritually. I enjoy honor and exemption. Honor and exemption. Honor and exemption. For in Jesus' name I pray. For in Jesus' name I pray. I decree and declare by reason of this teaching tonight and by the power that raised Christ from the dead, may the presence of God, like you have never experienced in your faith walk, may it mantle you from tonight. In the name of Jesus that you will become a living manifestation of the Shekinah of the Almighty that presence will go with you to your homes it will go with you to your office it will go with you to your school it will go with you to your business it will go with you to your church it will go with you to your place of assignment it will be with you while you travel that presence will be with you as you return in the name of Jesus Christ hear me when the rod of Aaron was kept before the ark even though it had no root to the earth it bordered by all means be fruitful by all means be fruitful whether it is favorable or not by mystery of the presence of God in the name of Jesus be fruitful multiply be fruitful multiply 
between this week and Sunday I decree and declare may my God surprise you may my God surprise you surprise you with favor surprise you with honor exempt you from evil in Jesus name so you walk out of this place tonight conscious of the fact that I am not alone the same way you never walk conscious of your nakedness because perpetually there is a cloth now think so spiritually and even physically that what I am wearing is not just a cloth that is covering my nakedness there is another layer of glory upon me as you shake people shake from that glory as you talk talk from that glory as you minister minister from that glory as you do business do business from that glory I forbid death over your life I forbid infirmity over your life I, I forbid shame and reproach over your life in Jesus name I pray and for those who are saying apostle I've not even met Jesus not to talk less or talk more of securing that divine presence for me I want to start the journey of knowing him are we together now there are people here who are saying apostle I do not know Jesus I have not met him sincerely like our dear sister who came and made commitments maybe a few months I presume ago I want to give you an opportunity right now to know Jesus and to love him and to receive him listen the foundation for the believers experience is Jesus and if you have not met him genuinely and received his life then you cannot even secure that divine presence and then there are others who are saying apostle if you would give me a chance I want to rededicate my life we have just one minute for you wherever you are whether you are inside of the balcony around as I count one to five please very quickly let's celebrate them as they come one someone is coming don't sit back Jesus is giving you an opportunity you have seen the power of God you've seen the products of his presence come koinonia is this the best you can do come if you're coming from far please hurry up very quickly we have just a minute for you congratulations God bless you keep coming keep coming keep coming apostle I'm not sure if I'm saved can I join them absolutely you're most welcome join them there is such a thing as the assurance of salvation you can be sure today and tonight that you've had a genuine encounter with Jesus hallelujah thank you very much for making this bold decision listen this is the house of God this is where you find Jesus hallelujah praise the name of the Lord now may I request that you lift your right hand high above your head say this after me convincingly say Lord Jesus please if you're joining them join them fast if we say amen before you arrive you were not saved the the prayer is what makes for the salvation not just that you come and say amen hallelujah so if you're joining please hurry up thank you thank you very much thank you now please say this after me as loud as you can say Lord Jesus that lady is using her phone we're praying a prayer of salvation you keep that thing and pray huh this is what we're talking about you keep it you can pray and walk on your phone later on my dear don't be distracted you're before Jesus say Lord Jesus I love you and I believe that you are the son of God I have heard your word and I confess Jesus as my Savior my Lord and my King I ask you to forgive me my sin and I receive eternal life into my spirit I declare by the authority of Scripture that from tonight and forever I am a child of God washed by the blood of the lamb I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name 
let me pray for you father in the name of Jesus Christ I thank you for this ones you have brought them out even by your spirit I decree and declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life I call you recipients of the life of God and I commend you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and to the Word of God I break everything that is not of God from your life I declare that you walk in the liberty of the sons of light go from glory to glory and grace to grace my friend look at me this gentleman I rebuke that spirit I'm seeing something tying this gentleman in the name of Jesus be released now now in the name of Jesus liberty comes for you at the cross thank you father it is done in Jesus name let's celebrate them as they go may I request that you please move to my right which is your left God bless you a few counselors will be there to speak with you hallelujah praise the name of the Lord now very quickly just to remind you of what I said please every one of you be an active part of this I said two things number one for a global family hashtag koinonia global at your region or your nation let us know and then we'll be able to know how to reach you and then do inform ministers of the gospel and includes leaders also um, to just prepare their hearts and to wait for when we'll give all of these instructions and the Lord will help you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you. Your week Hello beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain